Amen. God bless you guys. We are so happy you're here. Merry Christmas. All right. So it's, it's the Christmas season. And so what we do is we typically want to always look on the other side of Christmas. Uh, we we want to look at Christmas for what it really is. It's more than a holiday. It's more than just presents and, and trees and and. It's more than that. So Christmas can get a little chaotic, right? And so we want to talk about chaotic Christmas. Christmas can get quite chaotic. You know, the traffic, the shopping, uh, the malls, the presents for loved ones. Uh, <clears throat> how about that family over? In-laws, family come to visit. And oh, yeah, it's a pandemic right now, right? And so, so Christmas can get a little chaotic, and so let me tell you this, we are in good company because the very first Christmas was chaotic as well. The very first Christmas was weird. You know, let's think about this. Joseph and Mary, they're about to have a baby, and they're not married. Now, in this season, this was very chaotic. I know now this is normal, but that was very chaotic in that season. You know, Joseph, he's about to call it off, the whole wedding, right? She already got her colors. Think about this lady. She got her colors. She got her dress. She has all the food. She probably have, she knows where the reception is going to be at. She has all this, think about this. She has all this squared away, and he's about to call it off. That's chaotic. And on top of that, angels are visiting them. That's a little weird, right? Pretty chaotic. Oh, yeah. And just to drop the mic on it, she's pregnant and the baby daddy is the Holy Ghost. And so this is a chaotic, this is a chaotic Christmas. The very first Christmas ever is real chaotic because she's pregnant, she's not married, she's claiming that the, her BD is the Holy Ghost. And so she's like in this little situation where it's quite chaotic. As a matter of fact, I want to go ahead and give you this the entire purpose or the premise for Christmas is based on chaos. That's the entire purpose for Christmas, but we don't get that typically, right? We get all excited, and we should be excited, but the whole purpose of Christmas, the entire purpose for Christmas is based on chaos. Because it's so chaotic on earth, because it's this situation that's taking place on in earth called a sinful nature now a baby has to be born a baby has to be born and he has to go to the cross why because it's chaos so christmas is all about the whole world being chaotic the whole world being in darkness because think about this when the world was offered light we opt for darkness we chose darkness. We made an agreement with darkness. So the entire Christmas theme, Christmas is all about the whole world being chaotic. It's all a mess. I mean, it's dark out there, isn't it? Have you ever been in the world? Oh my God, if you go out there right now, it's dark out there. I mean, chaos is at its all time high. And so when the world was offered light, we opt for darkness. John chapter 1, verse 9 says it like this, the true light, not a fabrication, not a false light, the true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. Talking about Christmas. He was in the world, and the world was created by him. But the world did not recognize him. He came to what was his own, but his own people did not receive him. Talking about, talking about light. Light came, the true light, talking about Jesus, came and the world chose darkness. The world opted for darkness. There's chaos in the world. I mean, there's real darkness. Darkness is real. Darkness is real. Let's think about it. You got diseases out there. 
You got depression out there. You got divorce out there, destruction out there. It's chaotic out there. Darkness is real out there. But honestly, darkness is real in here. Because often we choose to think that darkness is out there. It's far away from me. But darkness is in here as well. Reminds me of a little boy that in the past he had wrote Santa some letters. He wrote him some letters with his list of all the things that he wanted for Christmas. So he sent those letters to Santa, and every time he got his presents and he ripped open the wrapping paper, it seemed like he would always be disappointed because he get, wouldn't get what was on that list. So he wrote Santa over and over and over again. Santa never responded. So he decided to write God. He said, I'm going to go up the organizational chart. I'm going to your boss, buddy. I'm writing God. So he starts off his letter. He says, dear God, I've been good all the time, so I want all of my presents that are on my list. And he thought about it. He crossed it out. He said, okay, let me start over. Dear God, I've been good most of the time. So I would like most of my presents that are on my list. He said, no, let me, I shouldn't start it off like that. He says, dear God, he crossed out all of that. He started it again. He said, dear God, I've been good reasonable amount of time. I should get a reasonable about amount of my presents. He crossed it out. He was sitting at the table, and he looked at the nativity scene. And he grabbed baby Jesus out of the manger. And he said, dear God, if you ever want to see your son again, I want all my presents <laughs> right now. It reminds me of us, right? You know, just like this child, I mean, you know, it seems real... Uh, grim, it seems dark, but that's the proof that there's darkness all over the world. There's darkness everywhere. We, you, I, us, we all deal with darkness. Darkness is real. You know, remember what it says, it said the true light who gives light to everyone was coming into the world. That's what Christmas is all about. So God offered light, true. People opted for darkness, true. But God reviews he refused to let the story end with darkness. He refuses. God, Christmas is all about God continually reaching out to us in our darkness. That's what Christmas is all about. Christmas is all about you and I being in our mess, and the message of Christmas is that God did not just leave us there and did not bring a solution for us. That's the beautiful thing about Christmas. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 1, look what it says. It says, nevertheless, that time of darkness and despair will not go on forever. That's a good message. Right there in the beginning portion of verse 1 in chapter 9 of Isaiah, it says, nevertheless. So this gives us the ability to say, I know I'm not who I want to be. And I know I'm not yet who I'm supposed to be. But thank God I'm not who I used to be. Nevertheless, nevertheless, that word nevertheless, that's my favorite portion of that scripture. It says nevertheless, that time of darkness. Nevertheless means that, you know what, it's like a hinge on a door. You know, that it's about to shift to something else. That hinge, mean, you know, on a door gives the ability the door to open and give you access to something you didn't have access to. A door does that. A door gives you access to an area you wouldn't normally have access to. 
Without doors and rooms, you wouldn't be able to get in houses. You wouldn't be able to get to other areas in a house. So a door gives you access. Somebody I say, I want access. Here it is. He's given us access because Christmas is all about God continually reaching out to us in our darkness to give us access. It continues on. It says the land of Deba, uh, Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, which lies around along the road that runs between the Jordan and the sea, will be full of glory. Let me explain what this means. Naphtali and Zebulun, this is an area that was full of darkness. Galilee, these are Gentiles. This is way back when Isaiah was writing. That's why I don't know why anyone would ever think that God wasn't for the whole world. It's not a specific people. Now, remember when you read in the Bible, there were some Pharisees, some Sadducees, some scribes. They thought that only the Israelites were the chosen people. They were all bougie and stuff. They had their nose up in there like, why would Jesus hang out with sinners? Why would Jesus hang out with people that are less than? Well, God had been saying he was going to do that forever. The land of Zebulun and Naphtali will be humbled, but there will be a time in the future. There will be a time. There it is. There's that shift. Nevertheless, that's what he's saying. There will be a time. There will be a time in the future when Galilee of the Gentiles, these are not Jews. These are people that God, you know what, people that God, you know, was going to reach and individuals excluded them. Have you ever been a part of those excluded groups? But that's the cool thing about Christmas. Christmas is all about God continually reaching out to us in our darkness. Galilee. It's a foreign land, non-Jew land, a backward land, a dangerous land, a dark place. This fulfills the scriptures. This fulfilled, this scripture was fulfilled. This prophecy was fulfilled in the book of Matthew, chapter 4. It says, he went first to Nazareth and left there and moved to Capernaum beside the Sea of Galilee in the region of Zebulun and Naphtali. This fulfilled what God said through the prophet Isaiah. Remember, we're talking about the true light, Jesus. Jesus bringing light to an area where there was darkness. Jesus bringing light to a place that hadn't been reached out to. Jesus bringing, bringing light to a group of people that felt like they were counted out. But God counted them in. So now they could be counted on. See, sometimes we, you know, we think that we've been counted out. And so we need to understand this Christmas story. The Christmas story is all about God reaching out to his people continually in their mess, in darkness. In Matthew, he says he first, he went to uh, Nazareth, but then he continued, he moved on to Capernaum, and this fulfilled what God said through the prophet. In the land of Zebulun, And Naphtali, beside the sea, beyond the Jordan River in Galilee, where so many Gentiles live, verse 16 says this, the people who sat in darkness. See, it's the difference between being in darkness and now setting in darkness. You know, when you, when you experience darkness, many of us, we experience darkness. We, we respond in darkness. We do darkness. You know you do. But it's the difference between you sitting in darkness. Sitting in darkness means you, you feel like you will never get out of it. You just got comfortable in this darkness. And so no one had even reached out to them. So they say, you know what? We're the Gentiles. Who cares? We're supposed to be scandalous. We're supposed to act like this. We're supposed to have this type of character. So we're just going to sit in darkness. The people who sit in darkness have seen now what? A great light. And for those who lived in the land were death cast in shadow a light has shined now he's saying you know what those who are maybe in darkness that may be you you may feel like you are hopeless but the christmas message is all about god continually reaching out to you and i in our darkness that's good why that's a good thing because there's always hope you can you're not too far gone no matter what you've done no matter how you've lived no matter what you've entertained the christmas theme the christmas messages that God is continually reaching out. You know how many years these people have been that way? 
Hundreds of years. You know, do you know how long the Gentiles have been the way they've been? Hundreds of years. Thousands of years. God never gave up on them, though. You know, sometimes we need to remember as believers that we got to stop counting people out. No, no, I, I didn't hear it. You know what I'm saying? We need to stop counting people out. You know why we need to say amen? Because sometimes we count ourselves out. You know, I'm not even talking about you counting other people out. You may do that on your spare time as well. But what many times we do is we count ourselves out. And so right here, we're seeing that God does not count us out. He's constantly reaching to us in our darkness. Christmas is all about that. Also, Christmas is about the world having an opportunity to come into their life. Not only does he present light, not, does he, not only does he reach out to light, I mean to, to us in the darkness, and present light, and he reach out to us in the darkness, not only does he reach out to us in the darkness, but he also gives us an opportunity to step into the light. Because when you sit in darkness, it means that you've gotten comfortable in this darkness, you don't believe you can even get out of this darkness. Now, it's one thing to walk in darkness, it's one thing to stumble in darkness. But now they're setting in darkness. I mean, I'm getting comfortable living in this condition. Christmas is about the world having an opportunity now, not only to get out of darkness, but learn how to live in light. That's a whole nother thing. When I got saved, I didn't know how to live in dark. Uh, in, well, I knew how to live in darkness. I didn't know how to live in light, excuse me. So it's one thing to be exposed to light, but it's another thing to learn how to live in light now. Let me give you, let me explain this clear again. It's one thing to get saved, but it's another thing to live saved. Let me say it like this. Jesus' birth was not only for us to be born again, but it was for us to live again. You see what I'm saying? Because some of us, we get born again, but we don't know how to live now. And so, yeah, we're saved, but we don't live it out. You would have to tell someone you're saved. So Christmas is about the whole world having an opportunity to come into the light. God promises that he'll bring light. He promises that. He promises these individuals. In Isaiah chapter 9, verse 2, it says, the people who walk in darkness, talking about the Gentiles, talking about the people that hadn't been saved yet, talking about the people that hadn't came to church, talking about the people that didn't believe in God. It says, the people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For Now watch this, you'll see a light, and those who live in the land of deep darkness, a light will shine. So he says, now you're going to have light where you can learn how to live again. Living in darkness is something else because you live off your feelings. How, how many of us, when we, went to, we go into a room, a dark room, and, and you know, you, you can't find the light fixture of the lamp, what do you do? You try to feel your way through because you, you got to live off your feelings. You can't li live logical because you're in darkness. And cause, so when you're in darkness, you live off your feelings. Like, oh, I can't believe they said that. And it's just like everything bothers you because you're in darkness. Can anybody understand what I'm saying? See, darkness calls you to walk in your feelings. Now, I'm not saying feelings should be ignored because we should be able to acknowledge our feelings. That's true freedom is to acknowledge our freedom. I mean, acknowledge our feelings. So true freedom is to acknowledge our feelings, but it does not say make a re decision out of your feelings. It doesn't say respond out of your feelings. It doesn't say speak out of your feelings. Are you getting this or no? Come on now. Some of y'all is married. I'm helping y'all right now. I'm telling you. you know what I'm saying? Because a lot of times, you know, we, we'll actually, you know, have some feelings about a situation, but that don't mean you got to speak out of it. I mean, I feel some type of way all the time. But it ain't like I just sit over and, you know what I'm saying, communicate out of my feelings. So it's good to know how you feel, you get that, but don't respond out of, you, how, out of how you feel. Because that's learning to live in the what? Light now. Because I already know how I feel to live in darkness. Because I respond out of darkness. I respond out of my feelings. I respond, you know, harshly I respond out of my emotions. So Christmas is all about. The world having an opportunity. Now we have an opportunity to live in the light. How does God bring this light in the midst of chaos, in the midst of darkness? How does God bring this light into the midst of darkness, in the midst of chaos? 
Well, through Christmas, through the birth of Jesus, through the birth of Jesus, Jesus comes and he brings the true light. And, and it says, watch this, as we continue in Isaiah, we're going to go to verse 6 and 7 in chapter 9 of Isaiah. Chapter 9, verse 6 and 7 says, For a child is born to us, a son is given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. His government and its peace will never end. He will rule with fairness and justice. I love that. Just to, ta just to tackle that last portion, and we'll back up, and we're going to just go ahead and eat on that for a minute. The first part says he, ju he, he judges with fairness and justice. Okay, some say mercy and, and, and justice. Others say love and law. Fairness means he's going to be loving and he's going to be caring, but justice means he got to do it according to what his words say, and that is love. See, some of us, we like, well, because he loves me, he disregards what the word says. No, 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 no. He don't do that now. He don't do that. No, God don't do that. But, but what he does is he deals with us in love, but it's based on his word. That's the balance. Have you ever seen uh, Lady Justice with the blindfold? And they have the scale up there. Why? Because the scale balances everything out. That's how God balances everything out. He, he loves you, and he loves me and I, and, and he loves us, but he deals with it also according to his word. It's according to his word, and his word's not, his word's not wrong. You know, I know it's sometimes hard to digest and process, but it's not wrong. But this is what he says. He says, look, this is how I'm going to bring light into it. Now, that's how we live in the light is based on his love and his word. But he says, a child is going to be born to us. That makes him human. But then he said, a son is going to be given to you. It's on the cross. That's what makes him divine. See, a child is going to be born to us. Born, that means he's human. He's 100% man. But a son is going to be given, meaning he's my son. He's going to be given up on the cross. That's what makes him divine. So he's 100% man and he's 100% God. Then he gives us all the names, right? But watch this. He says the government will rest on his shoulders. Get that. The government. Government is what rules. How we rule our life can rest on his shoulders. We don't have to rule on, over our life anymore. A lot of times we put the government of our life on our shoulders. And that's why we're all, you know, out of whack and we're all messed up. and We got these attitudes and, you know, we, you know, because we put the government of our life on our shoulders. Anybody have a problem doing that sometimes? Putting the government of our life on our shoulders. Get this. It says a child is born, humanity. A son is given, divine. And so God's generosity is seen here because God sends his son to be given for you and I. So remember this. I want you to get this. Jesus' birth was not only for us to be born again, but for us to live again. Why? Because often we stop with just being born again, and we forget that God wants to show us a whole new life to live again. Now, let me let you know this. Live again don't mean going back to the way you used to live when you were doing good and you had that nice house and you had, ooh, I had it going on, girl. You know, I had it going on, dude. You know what I mean? No, we're not talking about li to live again means going all the way back to the original idea he had for us from the beginning. That's to live again. I don't care how much money you get. I don't care how many cars you have, how much education you get. No matter what, you can have more degrees than a thermometer. And it does not matter if you are not living. You see, so don't think that living again means going back to living in a cool space. No, living again. Jesus' birth was not only for us to be born again, but for us to live again. Live again how? How he originally created Adam. How he wanted us to live in his presence. Live, live getting his guidance, get, live getting his direction, live, you know, having a relationship with him. And I know some of us, we don't want to hear this because we, we want to have this false Christianity. It ain't nowhere in the Bible, that this Christianity that we be like coming up with. You see what I'm saying? And the thing we got to do is we got to look at how God intended us for, 
for us to do it. And so last but not least, Christmas is about God giving us power to live in the light. That's cool. Because not only did he expose us and give us an opportunity to live in the light, but what he does is he gives us the power. That's cool because he could have just left us there to try to figure it out. But in, in reality, God saves us, but then he, and he says, okay, I want you to live in the light. I'm giving you opportunity to live in the light. But he doesn't leave us to figure it out on our own. He gives us the power to be able to live in the light. That's important because we need to have power to live in the light. We, you, you don't just stumble into the light. This is an intentional, willful, thoughtful action. This is not something you just stumble up on. You don't figure it out. You know, just, oh, I'm going to just listen to many podcasts I can and, and read the Bible as much as I can. Then when you get finished, there's still a responsibility to operate under the power of the Spirit of God, which is something that we should be focusing on, how, learn, what, how to learn to do. And we got to learn how to live in the light. Because, man, I'm telling you, darkness is real out there. Darkness is real out there. Divorce, death, disease, destruction. But darkness is also real in here. Because every person that lives, we have a thing of darkness living inside of us. And I'm going to to tell you that only Jesus has the power to push back that darkness. Only Jesus has the power to push back the darkness of offense, push back the darkness of hatred, to push back the darkness of racism, to push back the darkness. Only Jesus has that power. No one else has that power. You can sit over and try to read all the self-help books you want. You can do whatever you want to do, but eventually we all have to come to the conclusion we got to learn how to live under the presence of God. Amen. we got to learn how to live under the power of God. Amen. Because, you know, it, it, you know, there are so many times I was wondering and while struggling in my Christian walk. I've been in a, uh, uh, serving the Lord about three years at this time, and I would read the Word. And everything inside me, I wanted to actually apply it. I mean, I'm talking about like on my knees crying type stuff. Like, man, I want to do the right thing. I truly understood Paul when he said the things I want to do, I don't do. I was totally doing the opposite in my Christian life. Three years, day in and day out, focusing on doing the right thing. And I would read the word and I would get up and I would do exactly the opposite of what I know I should have done. I was like, what is going on here? What is happening here? Some of us are top heavy. We have a lot of direction from the word of God. But it's discouraging when you don't learn, know how to live under the power of the Holy Spirit because everything, you, all the direction he's given you, you won't have the power to carry it out. So you get discouraged. It's like, man, and then some people, they got a, a strong prayer life. They'll pray and worship all day. And they're like, you know, just running around excited, but with no direction. So they're excited. And they think you're just supposed to do anything. Oh, and they call it God because they really didn't get any clear direction for what God's word said. But they're excited, though. They're excited about the Lord. They're running around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, God is good. Amen. Yeah, yeah. And they're all pumped up with no clear direction. He says, I judge and I'll deal with him. Fairness, love, my spirit, justice, my word. Let's think about this. The disciples, it was 12 of them. After Jesus' birth, they didn't know how to live in the power of the light. They didn't live in the power of the light. They didn't know how to live in the light. They didn't have the power. They had hung out with Jesus, the best pastor in the world. One of them betrayed him. The other 11 ran off. And he told him, he says, the enemy is going to strike the shepherd and y'all going to all scatter. And they were like, yeah, right. I'm not going nowhere, Jesus. That's what Peter said. Peter said, no, you're going to go. Not because I want you to. You're going to go. They had all these instructions. What, how many times should we forgive Jesus? How should we pray Jesus? They hung out for three and a half years with Jesus. And so they had the best teacher, right? But they still didn't have the power to stand in there. So he said, you know what you need to do? Y'all need to, he came back after he died. He came out of the grave. He came from the tomb and he told him, he says, look, man, y'all need to wait for power, man. I'm going to clothe y'all with power. Y'all got instructions. Y'all got directions. Y'all just don't have power to carry it out. 
We got to have the word and the spirit. We, don't have to, we can have the word all we want to and don't have, we can have the spirit living in us, but we don't know how to function under him. And so, so now, watch this. Like me, I had the spirit in me, but you'd be over here on your knees crying like, man, I don't want to do that no more. I don't want to. I'm tired of always saying something back. I'm tired of arguing with my wife. I'm tired of arguing with my spouse. I'm tired of doing this. I'm tired of getting angry, anybody ever? I'm tired of just getting all up in my feelings. Because Christmas is about God giving us power to live in the light. Not only did he want to give us an opportunity to come to the light, but he wants to give us power to live in the light. To enjoy Christmas is one thing. But to enjoy Christ is another. And so a lot of us, we may be enjoying Christmas with our presence. But I'm here to tell you, it's an entire different thing to enjoy Christ himself. So how do we take advantage of the Christmas season? How do we take advantage? I'm going to give you a few things. How do we take advantage of the Christmas season? One, realize Christmas is about our chaotic condition. Let's not sweep that under the rug. Christmas is about our chaotic condition. The world. Light came into the world. People opted out for darkness. People chose darkness over light. And the Bible says in John chapter 3, he talks about, you know, right after that great verse that we love, God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son. Right after, read after that, he started talking about the light came to the world, but men love their evil deeds because they like, they like darkness more. And he talks about, he says, the light came, but people rejected it. And so we need to realize that Christmas is about our chaotic condition. Another thing we can do to enjoy our Christmas season it's confirming your heart that you can't get out of this condition without Jesus. Confirm that in your heart. Stop trying everything else. Stop trying to read a lot. Stop trying, you know, Jesus. It's a big difference. Don't think church is Jesus. Don't think fellowshipping with your, per your brother is Jesus. That's cool. Or fellowship with, that's nice. But Jesus, is, they're not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. Well, I hung out with pastor all day. Well, I'm not Jesus. Please, have to, you got to have some type of encounter with Jesus himself, you know, confirming your heart that you can't get out of this condition. And I know that seems simple, but we find, we find ourselves trying to get out of our condition so many ways. We have all these get right with God quick schemes, right? You know, I'm going to just read all day. You know, you know, I'm going to just listen to podcasts all day. I'm, I'm going to just, you know, I'm going to read my Bible all day. I'm going to come to church every time they open up the doors. That's great. But that does not substitute for Jesus Christ. I remember I was, went to this conference. It was so amazing. People were crying. People had their hands lifted up. They were worshiping. And I didn't get nothing out of them. Because something was going on with my heart. So my point is saying that you can actually come to church and not get nothing. You know, and, and, and it's not the church fault, it's not the pastor's fault, it's because somewhere in there, you know what I'm saying, something's going on with you. That's typically when people bounce around, bounce around, because they're looking for something somewhere, but it's actually within what we need, to, we need to deal with that. So confirm in your heart that you can't get out of this condition without Jesus. Then call out to Jesus for salvation, but also growth. Because sometimes we stop at salvation. And I'm so excited that I am not the person I used to be. But it has to be a hunger and a drive inside of us to grow, to get plugged in with the Lord. And then, last but not least, make a commitment to live for what God says is life. Don't have a fabricated life. Don't create a light of your own. But what God says is light, don't, don't, don't think a book tells you what light is. Don't think that, you know, someone tells you what. God's word tells us what light is. So, so make a commitment to live for what God says is like. Not what you say is like. Because I've talked to a lot of people, and we're, we're about to do a series, and, and uh, my buddy, a good friend of mine, he gave me a, a good idea. And it's going to be called, Jesus Says What? Jesus Said What? 
Like, because some people, they, 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 we've created another narrative that Jesus said, and, and then we're worshiping someone that's not Jesus anymore. It's not the biblical Jesus, it's the Jesus you created because somewhere you disagree with what God's word said. We need to make a commitment to live for what Jesus says and what God says light is. Today, if you can bow your head right where you're at, if you're online, if you're driving, please don't bow your head and close your eyes, but if you can just receive this prayer, I have a prayer that, you know, we can all receive today. That Christmas was all about the world being chaotic, living in darkness. But thank God, God did not leave us there. God did not leave us in darkness. He, he, Christmas is about us all having an opportunity to come to the light. God reaching out to us in our dark condition and giving us opportunity to come to the light. Christmas is all about Jesus giving us the power to live in the light. So right here, right now, I pray in the name of Jesus that each and every individual that can hear the sound of my voice will make a commitment today to not only enjoy Christmas, but to enjoy Christ. Because that's an entirely different thing. So today, as we lift up our voice, we lift up our hearts to you, O oh God, I pray for a fresh, fresh anointing to destroy any thought of any unbiblical Jesus any unbiblical Jesus. We need a true, authentic Jesus. We honor your birth. We want to honor your life. We want to honor your resurrection. We want to honor who you really are. And so that's why we lift up our voices. That's why we lift up our hearts. That's why we ask you, Jesus, to break the shackles of darkness in our lives. We don't want to be addicted to anything outside of you and your ways, oh God. Lord, help us to learn how to function in the power of God to walk in light, to walk in light, to live in light, to be light of the world so we can shine our light to everybody that may be in darkness. We can bring light to their situation through the hope of the gospel. So right here, right now, in the name of Jesus, receive the light of God. Receive it. Receive it. name of Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jesus. Just one. Everything changes. Uh huh. And I'm captivated. Say, Jesus. I receive you as my Savior. 